Only Sega can do it. Really. Only Sega can take the most bizarre of premises and turn them into such entertaining and fun games. I mean, take a look at Space Channel 5, or even Sega Bass Fishing for that matter. Both of these games, on paper, sound about as much fun as a trip to the dentist, yet once Sega got a hold of the idea, both games ended up being certifiable classics in each of their respective genres, and have since been re-released several times. Add to that list one of Sega's silliest ideas, and of course the game we're talking about on today's episode. And that's 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker on the Dreamcast. Originally a sit-down style arcade game, this one was ported over to the Dreamcast back in 2001. You have to wonder about the initial meeting that took place when the idea for this game was greenlit, and at the same time you have to appreciate the ability of the old AM2 division in putting together such a wonderfully fun and exciting arcade-style driving game in the process. The basic premise of the game is to drive a semi-truck of your choosing complete with a cargo payload from your starting point to a pre-designated destination within the allotted time limit. There are a handful of selectable drivers and trucks to pick from before you start off on your track, each with different trucks that of course have varying abilities. Although there is a strict deadline in place for each level, keep in mind that there are certain cars on the road that can be hit for small time bonuses. There are quite a few things in 18-wheeler that do make the gameplay interesting. First off, it does instill in you a certain sense of urgency. The time limits can be a bit unforgiving, so your driving needs to be impeccable to make it to the checkpoints on time. On top of that, you'll also be having to deal with Lizard Tail, your rival driver who will taunt you across your CB radio and generally drive like a drunken 13-year-old all over the highway. Reaching your destination before he gets there will net you a bonus at the end of the stage. The courses in the game also have the tendency to split on you and offer some alternate routes, and these can be lifesavers at times. Taking the right split and having a clean patch of road for a few seconds will most certainly help you make up some time and, of course, hopefully get a handsome lead on Lizard Tail. Not that you should really have to make up any time for that matter. I mean, New York City to Key West in five minutes? That seems pretty good to me. The hang of it. Your destination this time is... After you make it through the initial level of the game, you'll also be asked from here on out to select your cargo before each stage. One will be easier to haul, but the other choice will end up netting you a bigger cash reward if you make it to the goal on time. It's not a terribly big deal unless you're playing the game solely to go for a high score, but it is nice to have the option nonetheless. You're in my way, Greenhorn! In the garage. Though it doesn't sound like it would be at all, one of the most fun parts of 18-wheeler actually comes in between each stage, where you'll be tasked with parking your rig in a designated parking area within the time limit. This brief reprieve from the driving sections acts more like a bonus game, and will provide you with items that you can use in the following stage, like the horn for example that will encourage traffic to disperse, or the exhaust that will up your max speed. These sections require precision and caution, and are quite fun to replay until you can get it just right. As enjoyable as the game is, it is also very short. There are only a total of four stages to drive through in the arcade mode before the credits roll, but fortunately the Dreamcast port adds in a score attack mode and the option to play with a friend via split screen. In addition, there's also a separate parking mode that can be tackled outside of the arcade game. The visual presentation in 18-wheeler is top-notch on the Dreamcast, with varied and lively scenery, lots of detail, and the game moves very smoothly even with all kinds of things happening at once on screen. Worth noting here is also the attention to detail inside the actual cab of the truck you're driving. Magazines on the dash, charms swinging from the rearview mirror, it's all beautifully represented here in that trademark Sega arcade style. 
Sound is also quite well done in this one too, but as with most Sega-made games, that should be no big surprise here. The effects and voices are great and do help to contribute to the atmosphere, but the music itself is boring and a bit drowned out by the general loudness of the action taking place on and off the road. Granted, this may actually be intentional. I just would hate for you to walk into this one and think you'll be hearing any outrun or super hang-on caliber Sega tunes. To wrap up, 18-Wheeler is an exciting, fun, and very arcade-like driving game on the Dreamcast, and is absolutely worth picking up if you have the chance. It's one of those games that won't require a huge investment. You can just jump right in and enjoy it with little to no experience and still have fun. It's also very reasonable on the Dreamcast, as complete copies of the game can be found for just a few bucks. The game was also later ported to the GameCube and PlayStation 2, so there are plenty of avenues to take as far as picking this one up. I highly recommend it, and if you're a fan of some of Sega's other quirky arcade titles, you'll no doubt have a great time with 18-Wheeler. As always, guys, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching and subscribing and commenting, and until next time, stay classic. Game over.